and welcome back to the vlog. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to be going to the Apple Day at Dalesford Farm. Dalesford is an organic farm in the Cotswolds, um, north of Bath. And I'm going to be driving there because they have an apple festival because it's um, apple season at the moment in England and they are going to have lots of events and products and it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun and the farm is really beautiful. I've been following them on Instagram for a long time and admiring everything that they do and I've always wanted to go there, visit and attend one of their events so I'm really looking forward to going to the Apple Day today and obviously I'm going to bring you along with me and show you around. Um, it's been raining the past few days in England really badly. <laughs> like. The weather's been miserable, but today it's blue sky, sunny, so I feel like it's the perfect day to go out and just have a lovely day. And I'll show you the outfit that I'm wearing today because it's quite autumnal as well. So I've got some um, kind of beige and black checkered trousers, which are fitted, and a nice um, woolly short sleeve top with a white collar, which I just think is a really cute outfit. And I've got that with some white trainers, and I'm also going to be wearing so the top and the trousers are old from Zara, but you can probably get similar things because they're quite staple pieces. But this coat I got recently from Hollister, and it is the softest coat because the whole thing is lined with this faux fur. And it's like wearing a fluffy blanket, and it's just amazing. I love <laughs> the colour and the shape of it. And yes, that's the full outfit, which I think is quite cute and perfect for today. And yes, I'm ready to go. I'm going to head off now because the event starts at 10 and it is already half past 10. I mean, it's an all-day event, so I can arrive whenever, but it's time to head off. I watch you as you dry. Do you know? at Dalesford. It's such an amazing farm. I can't believe I've never been there before because I've been to the Cotswolds millions of times but I've never been to that farm and they have an amazing cafe, restaurant, lots of organic fruits and vegetables and baked goods and it's literally a dream to just walk around. I wish I could buy everything um, but I didn't because obviously money but I'll show you what I got when I get back home. At the moment I've come to Yanworth for a walk because after such a big lunch I need to just walk a bit to get the digestion going and it's such a beautiful village. The views here are incredible especially in autumn the trees are just a patchwork of different colors and it's stunning and yes it's one of my favorite spots in the Cotswolds to come for a walk also because there's never any tourists here it's always empty so it's just so peaceful and I love to walk here it's just the perfect country walk so yes I'm just enjoying the peace the tranquility and thankfully it stopped raining so it was raining a minute ago so it's just a perfect autumn walk and yes it's been a lovely day one thing that I love about this walk is that there are so many pheasants. I don't know if you can hear them in the background. That noise, there's so many pheasants. And I love to collect pheasant feathers on my walks because you find them on the side of the road and paths. Um, and it looks really cute if you have a bunch of them in a vase. So I have that in my living room. Um, so I've just collected a few feathers now on this walk. But even just seeing them in the distance, it's so fascinating. I find them such beautiful birds. Um, so yeah, that's one of the good things about walking in Yanworth.
um, I had a wonderful time at Dalesford. It was my first time there and I really loved it because I try to buy organic food generally at the supermarket. Um, it was a lot easier when I lived in Paris actually because they have organic supermarkets. Like there was a brand of supermarket called Bio C'est Bon and I used to go there all the time to get food. In England you normally buy organic food at general supermarkets and have a section but they're quite limited and yes I wish I lived closer to Dalesford to be honest because I had everything there so um, I thought I would share just a bit of what I got. Since it's a while since I went there because I haven't had time to film, lots of the stuff I got has already been eaten or started to be eaten, so um, you'll have to excuse that it's not in a perfect condition. But um, some of the things that I got were um, some fruits and vegetables, so I got cavolo nero, kale, apples, obviously because I went for the apple day, so I had to get some apples, and as well as apples cider. Um, I'll put some footage of the cider that I got there, and it was really delicious. They use apples from their own orchard orchards um, and actually um, I'll talk a little bit more about the apple day while I'm on the subject because it was amazing I really loved it it was a very small scale I was expecting more of a bigger festival and it was um, more of a small um, event in their orchards but it was still really sweet I loved it and um, the location was just beautiful and I learned some cool things because they had um, set up outside some apple presses so they showed how you make apple juice and apple cider and you could have a go at turning the old presses and make some apple juice and try it and they had lots of different varieties of apples with all the labels and they gave tasters so you can compare the flavours and it's incredible how one fruit can have so much variation like it was actually really um, impressive to try all the different flavours and if I had my own grounds or my own garden or something I'd probably be more interested in um, trying the different varieties so I would know which type of apple tree to buy because I would love to have my own apple trees one day but I don't have a garden and <laughs> I don't have my own house so that's something for the future and they also had different skills like how to plait onions so they had a massive bucket of onions and you could have a go they would teach you how to plait them onto a piece of string and um, which is used for obviously if you grow your own onions in your allotment then that's a great way to store them so they stay fresh for longer I think they you can hang the pretty bunches up in the kitchen I think it looks amazing so now I know how to do that which is really cool and they had some different stalls with apple cider and food for sale and things like that it was just a really lovely atmosphere so I really enjoyed it and they had a tent in the middle with some events also for kids so they had um, flower crown making um, which I guess anyone could do any lower adults as well making flower crowns which was really lovely and some different arts and crafts but it was a great day and um, so it was really nice to go and it gave me the excuse to go to Dalesford for the first time so that was really nice um, so anyway carrying on with what I bought at Dalesford I got um, yes fruits and vegetables I think I got some mushrooms and some figs as well so yes a nice variety which again is mostly eaten by now but it was really nice and then some other things that I got were these compots so um, well the strawberry ones already opened but a strawberry and a rhubarb compote which I like to have on yogurt I think it's a great snack or for breakfast um, yeah or even on porridge although I mainly use them for yogurt and then I also got this really cool jar, which again is open, so it's ruined, which is a shame because it was so beautiful. It's um, dark milk and white chocolate spread with hazelnuts in it. And it's just, I mean, white. It's not really white. I would say this is more of like a hazelnut layer, but it's so delicious. This is the best chocolate spread I've ever had. Um, and the way it's packaged is so beautiful with the different layers. I'm so annoyed that I didn't film it before. I had opened it because they're ruined where I've spooned it out however it's just so light and creamy I don't know how to describe it because normally chocolate spread is quite a dense texture but it's just really light this one is so delicious um so I've had that on pancakes for breakfast <laughs> um but yeah the stuff there is just really delicious and um it was lovely to have a day out there I also went for a coffee because they have a cafe they have a restaurant and I had um, a meal later in the day as well because I spent the whole day there basically um, it was really busy I was surprised how busy it was but I guess it's for people who live in the countryside it's a nice place to go to for a day out um, and for lunch I had what did I have I had mallard which is a type of duck the legs with garlic mashed potato and roasted carrots if I remember correctly yes with a red wine jus um, so it was really delicious 
Um, and afterwards, yeah, I went for a walk in Yanworth, which is a beautiful village, and it was a really lovely, beautiful walk, really autumnal. It was a lovely time of year to go there because all the leaves were lovely shades of orange and red and yellow, and there were loads of pheasants. I guess it must be pheasant season, and it looked like because Yanworth is a village that's owned by an estate. There's like a grand house that's set apart from the village and all of the houses in the village are owned by the house and you rent them from there. It's a strange system, I've never come across something like that before. And I know the land all belongs to the grand house and the family as well, and they have lots of pheasants because they hunt and, you know, the game. And there was quite a bit, like, buckets of food just left out for the pheasants, I guess, to encourage them to live in the area and to reproduce, I don't know, um, for their hunting purposes. But, yeah, it was really cool. They're such beautiful birds. Um, I had a really lovely day, so it was nice to take you along. I hope you enjoyed it too. I'm also going to quickly show you my outfit today because I really love this outfit combo. It's a white jumper that's got a little knot in it here, which is quite nice because um, it works well. You don't have to tuck it in, which can be annoying sometimes because it makes lumps in the clothes. Um, and yes, I've got a red checkered skirt that is really old. I got this a long time ago. Um, but I still wear it. <laughs> and yes, I think it's just a really cute outfit. It's possibly more Christmassy than autumnal because of the colours. However, I just really like combining jumpers with checkered skirts and um, yeah, this is what I'm wearing today. So I thought I would show you. So since this is becoming quite an autumnal video, I thought that I would bake some pumpkin bread um, because I really want to share my pumpkin bread recipe with you. This is an autumn staple in my house. We are always eating this. I love to bake a loaf and then have it for breakfasts or in the afternoon with a cup of tea and it's just delicious. It brings all the best flavours of the season together. Um, it's got a can of pumpkin puree in it or you can always bake pumpkin and turn that into puree if you don't have access to buy a can of pumpkin puree. And then it's got cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg, ginger, some walnuts and raisins, although if you don't like those you can leave them out, although I think they really make the loaf special. Um, and yes, it's just delicious. So I hope you try this recipe at home. I'm going to show you how I do it. And yes, I can't wait to start baking. So the first thing to do is to open the can of pumpkin puree. It really annoys me because this can doesn't have one of those can opener things on it, so I need to use a can opener. Bear with me one second. <laughs> Okay, I found the can opener. I also ought to put on an apron because I'm wearing a white jumper and then me, I'm going to get it all dirty. <laughs> I love this apron because it has little bunny rabbits on it. I have a lovely collection of aprons from Sophie Allport. They have the most beautiful patterns and I have some for different seasons. So the rabbit one is the one I normally use more in like autumn or spring. And I have a floral one which I use in summer. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Look at that, beautiful colour. So I'm going to pull that straight into the KitchenAid. The next step is to beat two eggs and add those in. And I have my eggs prepared here and I have these beautiful blue eggs. And they're from a breed of hen called the Cotswold Leg Bar. And I just love the colour of them, I think they're so cute. This is the type of egg that I normally buy in the supermarket because they also have a really lovely flavour and the yolks are really rich and golden in colour. Um, so go ahead and crack those and just beat them until they are smooth. Now that the eggs are nice and smooth, I'm just going to add them to the pumpkin. And then to sweeten it, you can add sugar if that's what you prefer, but I prefer to use natural sweeteners, so I'm going to add a third cup of honey to this mixture. And now the last wet ingredient to add are two tablespoons of oil. I'm going to use some olive oil because that's what I have at home. Then you can go ahead and mix all of the wet ingredients together. So I'm going to just do that now. So in this bowl I have prepared one and a half cups of flour. I have used spelt flour because for these kind of loaves like banana bread or pumpkin bread I like to use darker flours, so rye, spelt or wholemeal flour. But you can use white flour if you prefer as long as it's plain. Um, so I've got one and a half cups of spelt flour and then I have a teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of baking soda. And I'm just going to add those into the mixture gradually while it's 
while the mixer is on um, with a spoon just to slowly integrate it into the mixture. Now that the mixture is completely mixed um, and it looks beautiful, it looks just like this, the colour is amazing, <laughs> lovely and smooth, I'm going to put it into a loaf tin that I prepared with this handy bit of baking paper that is exactly the right size to slot into the tin, so no awkward cutting in corners. I'm going to pull that straight in and then I'm going to put it into the oven for about 50 minutes. It depends, it could be 45 minutes, it could go up to 60 minutes, it depends on your oven and how strong it is. I've already preheated it to 180 degrees Celsius, um, but I found that, because obviously I move around quite a lot because of university, so wherever I am, I'm using a different oven when I'm baking, and the variation is actually quite shocking. I think lots of people who think that they're not very good at baking, they just haven't learned how to deal with their oven, or they follow instructions too closely with baking or cooking tutorials, and it doesn't work with their oven, so... You just have to kind of feel, have a feel for what you're baking. So with this, I would say leave it in your oven at 180 degrees Celsius until um, when you put a stick through the middle of the loaf, it comes out clean and it just starts to look a bit darker on the top. Obviously this is going to be a much darker loaf. It might look like it's burning, but it's not. It's just because of the pumpkin. It's got a very deep color, so it's not going to be golden. It's going to be more of a dark brown when it's ready. Um, but I'll show you, obviously, when I take mine out, how it looks. Um, I'm just going to smooth the top with the spatula so that the loaf is nice and even when it bakes. Pushing the mixture into the corners just to make sure that it's nicely distributed. And voila, that is the mixture before it goes in. And yes, I'll just go ahead and put it in the oven and check back with you when it's ready. So the pumpkin bread has come out of the oven and it's risen quite well. It won't rise that much because this is meant to be quite a dense loaf because of all the pumpkin in it, the pumpkin puree. Um, it's not going to rise much, it's not going to be that fluffy. However, I think this is a success and this is what you're looking for in terms of the colour. So you can see it's kind of a dark brown colour almost. Um, but like I said, that's normal, it's not going to be golden because the mixture is very dark. So I'm going to slice it, it's still a bit hot, but I want to eat it when it's nice and warm and gooey inside. So, here goes. All the steam coming out of it. Here's a closer look of what the inside looks like. The smell coming out of this. If only you could smell through the camera, because honestly this is incredible. <laughs> I can't wait to try a slice. So yeah, this is what the final slice looks like. You can see it's quite rich in fruits and nuts, but that's what I like in my pumpkin bread. Um, so here goes. Mm. It's really good. <laughs> this is the perfect thing to bake for autumn. So if you're looking for something autumn or to bake, then go and try out this recipe for pumpkin bread. 
I love it because it's healthy, you know, it's not got any butter or sugar or anything in this loaf, and it's just something really cozy, makes your house smell amazing because of the spices, and it's really delicious. So please let me know if you try out this recipe at home, so I'd love to know how it turns out and if you enjoyed it. I hope you liked this video, if you did, please subscribe to my channel to get more recipes like this one and join me on more adventures, and I will see you next time. Bye!